This is the land of Havilah, Joshua 19. The first lot came out for Benjamin in the last chapter. Now the remaining six lots in this chapter. Simeon is up next. Verse 1. The second lot came out for Simeon, even for the tribe of the children of Simeon, according to their families. Their inheritance was in the middle of the inheritance of the children of Judah. They had for their inheritance Beersheba, or Sheba, Molada, Hazar Shual, Bala, Ezem, Eltalad, Bethel, Horma, Ziklag, Beth Markaboth, Hazar Susa, Beth Lebeoth, and Sharuhin, thirteen cities with their villages. Ain, Ramon, Ether, and Ashan, four cities with their villages. And all the villages that were around these cities to Baalath Bayir, Rama of the south. This is the inheritance of the tribe of the children of Simeon, according to their families. Out of the part of the children of Judah was the inheritance of the children of Simeon, for the portion of the children of Judah was too much for them. Therefore the children of Simeon had inheritance in the middle of their inheritance. Comment. This is the map of Simeon's inheritance, which is in the middle of Judah. Beersheba is the only one of those cities that can be definitely and precisely located today. The parcels of land were assigned by Lot. Psalm 16.33 says, quote, The lot is cast into the lap, but its every decision is from Yahweh. End quote. Casting a lot is something like drawing straws or pulling names out of a hat. When this particular lot came out for Simeon, we can see Yahweh's hand in it, and here's how. When Israel was on his deathbed in Genesis chapter 49, he sent out word to his twelve sons, saying, quote, Gather yourselves together that I may tell you that which will happen to you in the days to come. End quote. So the sons gathered at Israel's bedside, and he told them one by one what would happen to their descendants in the future. When Israel came to Simeon and Levi, he remembered what they had done in the Canaanite town of Shechem, Genesis 34, 25, and Genesis 49, 5, and 6. The two of them, Simeon and Levi, lost their tempers and killed every male in the town. Therefore, when Israel spoke to Simeon and Levi, he said, quote, I will divide them in Jacob and scatter them in Israel, end quote. As a result, hundreds of years later, Yahweh declared that Levi won't get any territory in Israel, Numbers 18.23. Rather, they'll get 48 cities scattered throughout the 12 territories. So that's how Yahweh honored Israel's deathbed pronouncement over Levi to scatter Levi in Israel. And now, also, the second lot for tribal land just came out for Simeon. Yahweh's hand was in that as well, because as it says in verse 9, Simeon's land is in the middle of Judah's land, meaning Simeon has the wilderness of Zin on the south and Judah on every other side. Because of this arrangement, it'll happen in the future that when Simeon, that it'll happen in the future that Simeon and Judah will mix together and Judah will absorb Simeon. Therefore, Simeon will be scattered among Israel according to Israel's deathbed words. Hebrews 11.21 indicates that Israel's words came to pass because he spoke them with faith that Yahweh would fulfill them, and of course Yahweh did. Going on now to the third lot, which fell for Zebulun, verse 10. The third lot came up for the children of Zebulun according to their families. The border of their inheritance was to Sarid. Their border went up westward even to Marla and reached to Dabasheth. It reached to the brook that is before Jachnium. It turned from Sirid eastward toward the sunrise to the border of Chisloth-Tabor. It went out to Dabarath and went up to Japhia. From there it passed along eastward to Gath-Hefer, to Ethkazin, and it went out at Ramon, which stretches to Nia. The border turned around it on the north to Hanathon, and it ended at the valley of Iftael. Katath, Nahalal, Shemron, Idala, and Bethlehem, twelve cities with their villages. This is the inheritance of the children of Zebulun according to their families, these cities with their villages. Comment. This is Zebulun's territory halfway between the Great Sea and the Sea of Chinnereth. None of the cities just mentioned are definitely identifiable today. The Bethlehem in Zebulun isn't the same as the one in Judah. Now the fourth lot, verse 17. The fourth lot came out for Issachar, even for the children of Issachar according to their families. Their border was to Jezreel, Chesaloth, Shunem, Hepharaim, Shion, Anaharoth, Rabbith, Kishion, Ebez, Remeth, Enganim, in Hada and Beth Pazaz. The border reached to Tabor, Shahazuma, and Beth Shemesh. Their border ended at the Jordan, sixteen cities with their villages. This is the inheritance of the tribe of the children of Issachar, according to their families, the cities with their villages. Comment. This is Issachar on the map, next to the upper Jordan River. Only Jezreel is identifiable today. 
Later, the city of Jezreel will be King Ahab's capital of the northern kingdom. Now the fifth lot, verse 24. The fifth lot came out for the tribe of the children of Asher, according to their families. Their border was Helkath, Holly, Betan, Akshaf, Alamalek, Ahmad, Mashal. It reached to Carmel westward and to Shihor Libnath. It turned toward the sunrise to Beth Dagon and reached to Zebulun and to the valley of Iftael, northward to Bethamech and Nael. It went out to Kabul on the left hand, and Ebron, Rehob, Hammon, and Kana, even to great Sidon. The border turned to Ramah, to the fortified city of Tyre, and the border turned to Hosa. It ended at the sea by the region of Oxib. Ummah also, and Aphek and Rehob, twenty-two cities with their villages. This is the inheritance of the tribe of the children of Asher, according to their families, these cities with their villages. Comment, this is Asher on the map. We can still identify Mount Carmel about here, the cities of Tyre and Sidon. We don't ever read of Israel driving out the inhabitants of Tyre and Sidon. Later on, Tyre will be the home of Canaanite king Hiram in the days of David and Solomon. Now the sixth lot, verse 32. The sixth lot came out for the children of Naphtali, even for the children of Naphtali according to their families. Their border was from Heleph, from the Oak and Adami Nekeb, and Jabneel, to Lakam. It ended at the Jordan. The border turned westward to Asnoth Tabor and went out from there to Hukuk. It reached to Zebulun on the south and reached to Asher on the west, and to Judah at the Jordan toward the sunrise. The fortified cities were Zidim, Zer, Hamath, Rakath, Chinnereth, Adama, Rama, Hazor, Kadesh, Edre, and Hazor. Iron, Migdal, El, Horem, Beth Anath, and Beth Shemesh, 19 cities with their villages. This is the inheritance of the tribe of the children of Naphtali, according to their families, the cities with their villages. Comment, this is Naphtali on the map. Of the cities mentioned, only Hazor is precisely identifiable today. As we read in Joshua 11, it was the chief city of all the northern Canaanite kingdoms until Joshua destroyed it. It was excavated in the 1950s. It's now an Israeli national park, about nine miles north of the Sea of Galilee. Now the seventh and final lot, verse 40. The seventh lot came out for the tribe of the children of Dan, according to their families. The border of their inheritance was Zorah, Eshtael, Irshemesh, Jaalabin, Ajalon, Ithla, Elon, Timnah, Ekron, Elteca, Gibbethon, Baalath, Jehud, Bnei Barak, Gathramon, Majarkon, and Rakon, with the border over against Joppa. The border of the children of Dan went out beyond them, for the children of Dan went up and fought against Leshem and took it, and struck it with the edge of the sword, and possessed it, and lived therein, and called Leshem Dan after the name of Dan their forefather. This is the inheritance of the tribe of the children of Dan according to their families, these cities with their villages. Comment, this is the territory that Joshua assigned to Dan by the lottery, the city of Joppa is still identifiable as modern Jaffa. Dan was not able to take possession of their assigned territory because of the native Amorites, Judges 134. Therefore, as it says in verse 47, the Danites went north into some of the unconquered territory within Naphtali. They took the city of Leshem from the Canaanites and they renamed it Dan. Thus, Dan became the northernmost tribe. Now coming up, just like Yahweh didn't forget Caleb, he's not forgetting Joshua either. At long last, in Joshua's old age, Joshua 13, 1, Yahweh is going to reward him with an inheritance of his own. Verse 49. So they finished distributing the land for inheritance by its borders. The children of Israel gave an inheritance to Joshua, the son of Nun, among them. According to Yahweh's commandment, they gave him the city which he asked, even timnath Sarah in the hill country of Ephraim, and he built the city and lived there. Comment, Joshua was an Ephraimite, so it was fitting that he asked for land within the borders of Ephraim. In verse 50, this grant was according to the word of Yahweh. Other than being in the hill country of Ephraim, the location of Joshua's city, timnath Sarah, is unknown. Verse 51, These are the inheritances which Eleazar the priest, Joshua the son of Nun, and the heads of the father's houses of the tribes of the children of Israel distributed for inheritance by lot in Shiloh before Yahweh, at the door of the tent of meeting. So they finished dividing the land. Comment, that's the chapter. Joshua 20 is next at land of Havilah.net. Joshua 20.